and welcome to episode 31 of the Breaking Yarn podcast. My name is McKaylee. I'm from Albuquerque, New Mexico, and this is my podcast where I talk about my knitting, my crocheting, and my yarn dyeing. You can find me online at breakingyarn.com or anywhere on social media at Breaking Yarn. If you are new here, welcome. Thank you for stopping by. Please consider subscribing and staying for a while. If you are not new here, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate you. Um, let's just jump right into it. I have two finished objects. Two finished objects. One is this. One is this. <laughs> One is my sea glass tea. One is my sea glass tea. I finished with sea glass tea. Uh, 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 we do so, I don't know if I have enough space here to do my dances, but I'm so excited. I have a finished object. It's a sea glass tea. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Enough. But let's start with this finished object. Really, let's start with this finished object. This is my sea glass tea. It's a pattern by Wool and Pine Designs, and I knit this out of my 2021 Fuzzy Whatnots Advent. This was the cool ad, excuse me. This is the cool advent. And it was 12 minis in one full skein. Um, and I made an entire tee out of it. I can't remember the size I knit. Um, I usually knit whatever is closest to around 40, like between 42 and 45 inches, whatever that size is. That's the size I made. Um, I did the main skein for the ribbing and the sleeves and the ribbing at the very bottom. And then what I did was I faded. So I started with my main skein this main skein and my first mini. And then I decided to fade my minis together as well to make the yarn stretch a little bit further. Um, also because I didn't want to run out of my main skein. So then I fade minis together, then I do that new mini with the main skein, then I fade my minis together, then I do the main skein with the mini, then I fade my minis together, etc., etc all the way down to the bottom. I knit this in the order that it was dyed and opened for the advent. Um, so it kind of has a natural fade a little bit. Like it starts out um, this like sagey green color and then it kind of goes into the blues and corals. And then like this is my favorite section because it has like these purples and then it starts fading. Oh, check out that. That, um, some nice pooling right there on the back. That's cool. Um, anyways, so then it goes into like these pinks and purples and then like darker pinks and purples and it ends on a dark purple. Um, and I actually went back and finished my sleeves, like doing the ribbing on my sleeves first because I wasn't sure like I was kind of just playing yarn chicken, to be honest, the whole time with every mini. Um, I did figure out that it takes me, for my size and my gauge, um, about 0.66 grams per round per color, right? So you're doing one by one color work. So it's two colors. Um, so that means each one, each round is over a gram, 1.2, 1.3 probably, um, 1.3 grams of yarn per round. And I wasn't sure how many rounds I could get. I did not do it like mathematically. I did not count rounds. I did not do any of that. I just kind of like, oh, I could probably get a round more out of that. And then it would knit one more round and look at it again and reassess. Um, and I also didn't want to like get that close on yarn chicken for each round. I probably could have even added more into each color, but 
I decided I like the way it is. It's a good length. It's actually not too short or anything. Um, it looks cute if I tuck it under my waistband too. It's a good length. It's perfect. I didn't want it to be like too cropped or anything. It fits. Um, I don't gauge swatch. <laughs> so it's always a little bit tricky there to see if it'll work. But <laughs> so far it works for me. Um, like I said, I just kind of pick a, pick a, um, uh, I just kind of pick a range, um, that is more than I need. And if I end up with less positive ease than I, than the pattern like anticipates or whatever, then it's not that big of a deal to me. Um, I do have like a little bit of positive ease, but it actually strip like kind of fits nicely. I do have a little bit of leftover yarns, just some scrappies there. I was thinking maybe I should try one by one color work socks to match. Do you think? I think that might be a fun idea. Um, we'll see how that goes because I'm into my sweaters and socks matching. So let's do that. Oh, and I knit this as a part of the Adventurally Mel um, 2022, and that has officially come to an end. I made the deadline. I finished it on Monday, last Monday, I think. And then um, just, you know, blocked it, was waiting for it to dry, etc. Um, and then the, the mal ended on Thursday. Um, yeah, it ended on the 31st. Thank you to everyone who participated in that. Um, Leah is drawing names this weekend, so we should have a list of winners from the Adventurely Mal. We had some great prizes from Charnet and from the Purling Perry and some yarn that Leah had picked up at a local yarn store in Florida while she was out there. Um, and also a gift card to Breaking Yarn. So we are very excited for the prizes and to contact everyone for that. But thank you so much if you participated in our make along. If you enjoyed it and you wanna do it again, let us know. Maybe we'll do it again next year. Maybe it'll be an annual advent make along to like finish up your advents because who wants to take their advent knitting into the next advent year? <laughs> like no one, right? I wouldn't. This is my first time doing an advent, but I'm so happy that I used the yarn. I did not like let it sit in my collection um, all year or anything. So. It was perfect, it was nice that um, I was able to get it done and now I can wear it all summer. Yeah. Um, my second finished object, I'm sure you can guess, are my Rose City yarn crawl socks. I finished them, I was super close to finishing them last time. Um, but I didn't quite get the finish, get across that finish line. Um, these are, these are socks that I knit with my friend Courtney. She shake crochet. We started these um, at the Rose City Yarn Crawl um, while we were waiting in line at the yarn stores and while we were just hanging out around her house and things like that, we would work on them. Um, and then we finished them obviously once we were back and um, I put together a reel about a sharing yarn and the benefits of doing that with a friend so that you can check in on them. It gives you an excuse, right? You don't need an excuse to text your friends and say, hey, how's it going? But um, if they're knitting a project that's similar to yours, you can say, hey, what's your project? What's your project? What is your progress? And like, talk about where you're at and where they're at and it just kind of gives you an excuse to check in on them. So it's a fun thing to do. Um, this is Knitted Wit yarn, sock yarn, and the colors are Into the Woods and the lighter colored one is 
the agate agate fossil beds national monument yes i remember that um and we just did striping so every two rounds we switched colors and then i did my heel toe and um cuff in my into the woods that's the colorway i picked out and they just turned out super cute like and they look so different from courtney's too which is funny um she did her cuff and did she do her toe now i can't remember but she did her cuff definitely in the agate, uh, agate one um the lighter color and they just changed the look of the socks so much but they're still obviously matching so it's fun i love doing that um rose city yarn crawl socks i'm so happy to have those done um and that was so fun to get to share with her on that i have two new whips that you've never seen before <laughs> <laughs> one of them you're gonna be like ugh you've been talking about this one forever it's in the brioche knitting book by leslie of knit graffiti i will put this link of this book down below in case you want to check that out but i am making the mist tea <clears throat> it's a brioche top a very simple brioche top this is in chapter one which means that it's a simple brioche project because they get more advanced in the other chapters um but i started with that one i just love the simplicity of it and i've been really into like short sleeved garments that i can wear in the summertime but this is my progress so far so it's knit in the round um and let's see that's my progress i haven't done a ton i just started it this week um but my main color my main color that i'm using is lily of the valley and i'm using my sock fingering base um from breaking yarn so if i have leftovers i can make socks <laughs> and this is breaking delphinium so i'm using the lily of the valley as my main color it's having a hard time focusing because it's kind of small um and then the contrasting color the color in between and or on the reverse side is breaking delphinium and i'm loving how it's like how it's knitting up it's so cute oh it's so cute um so the top is knit from the bottom up and you start with the brioche portion which i love brioche and brioche in the round <sighs> brioche in the round it's so nice um it's very simple so if you are new to brioche um this is a good project to i mean if you've done brioche i would maybe wouldn't start with brioche in the round but like if you've done other brioche projects well i don't know brioche in the round isn't too bad last episode i shared a community knit project where she practiced making a cowl just in the round with two colors um it is very simple because you only you don't you're not slipping stitches back and forth and then turning you're just working in the round so you're just knitting and barking um and you're knitting and barking with the same colors over and over so it is fairly simple um, it was just a lot of casting on. <laughs> the cast on probably took me the longest ever of a cast on project ever, like ever. Um, I used the German twisted cast on. I don't know if you can see that. It's a stretchy cast on. And Leslie, the author of this book, Annette Graffiti, has a YouTube video linked in her book, actually and um it was amazing i've never understood how to do the german twisted cast on until i watched her video and it was surprisingly um like soothing to watch like i was watching her and maybe it was like a mixture of me being tired too but like i was just like i could just watch this <laughs> like to like 
calm down and like get in like a good headspace <laughs> that would be a good video to watch <laughs> but he could also learn a new skill i feel like i didn't have to like watch it and rewatch it and then do it with her and like all that like the way she teaches it like i was like okay i understand what she's doing so anyways that's my miss t i'm working on that um yeah i only have two projects so we'll see how much progress i can make on that um my second whip is in a bag that i have from nicole of stitched below um i love this bag for on the go it even has a cute pocket on the inside um so cute i am knitting and i have my yarn in a cozy by danielle of midwest stitches um, I, every once in a while, I'm like, let me just do center pull, especially if my, my winding went perfect and I didn't have any skips. I will especially try doing center pull. Um, but the cozy definitely helps with that. And this is a test knit that I'm doing. Sorry, I have like so many strings everywhere. This is a test knit that I'm doing for Sarah K Knits. She has a YouTube podcast here and um, she's on Instagram. And this is her first sock pattern and it's called Meditation Socks. It's a little bit of a, like a ribbed sock, maybe like a broken ribbed sock. I'm not sure how she's gonna describe it. I'm not sure how she's gonna describe it exactly. Um, but I just added in my heel. I finished, so I finished the leg and then the heel and I just picked up the gussets and I think I did one round, like I need to work on this. Um, but my test net's not due until the end of April. Sorry, I hope you can't hear my dogs barking. There's like people walking by, so they go a little crazy for that. But it has a slip stitch heel flap, heel turn, and then I'll do my gusset decreases. And you continue this patterning on the instep of the foot. And then the bottom part is just straight stockinette like this on the back. Like that. And this yarn is the spring mystery box yarn from Lauren of Granite State Yarns. It's a lovely green. It's called Spring Meadows, which is perfect. And um, the mini that came with it is this pink. I decided just to do the contrast heel and that's it. Um, and the contrast mini I believe is called Pink Cosmos. Yep, Pink Cosmos. This is from Granite State Yarns. And yeah, I'm loving this. I um, wanted to test knit for Sarah because she has so sweetly tested it for me. Um, so they look like a fun pair of socks and I love getting to test out new patterns. So those, I'm not sure exactly when the pattern is gonna be coming out. The deadline for testing is not until the end of April, so maybe sometime in May, maybe sometime in May. Um, or maybe she'll, I don't know, I think the majority of the test group has already finished. Um, so maybe it'll come out sooner than that, I'm not sure. But that's it, those are my only two whips. Then I have some acquisitions that I wanted to share with you. Um, Knit Picks was having a sale on Felici. I've never tried Felici before. Um, but I was able to get these for 30% off. I will put a link down below to Knit Picks. I'm an affiliate with them, so if you want to check out um, their products through my link, I will earn a small commission, and that just helps, um, you know, with the channel and my time since they don't make any money on ads or anything on YouTube yet. Um, it just helps um, kind of subsidize my time a little bit. 
Um, so these are the ones that I got. This one is called, oh, it's called Summer Nights. And these are 50 gram balls. Um, and I didn't get two of them. I only got one of each um, because I feel like I can do a contrast and or I do shorties and that will be more than enough for a pair of socks or I can make them for someone else. And this one is called Zen. It's a lot of different blues. And then I got some Fable Fur Super Bulky Weight. It's 100% polyester. And the colorway name is Lappin. And I got 10 of these balls, a bunch of them. Yee! I got 10 of them um, because I would like to crochet a cardigan out of this. It's super soft. I think it'll be really warm and just cozy for like around the house. And I really want this year, one of my goals is to crochet a garment. Um, I'm pretty new at knitting garments still, but I really want to try crocheting one. So I figured this would be a fun project to crochet, um, like a cardigan or something to wear around the house. So if you have pattern suggestions for a crocheted cardigan that I can use super bulky weight in, please let me know. I, I, I have found a few that I'm like, this could work, but I'm not like in love with them. Um, so that's that. I'm looking for a cardigan pattern that is crocheted. Um, so those are my acquisitions. No, I have one more. No, I have two more. This one I got because I was like, just, I think just like a few dollars away from getting free shipping. <laughs> and so I was like, I might as well get this because I'm getting it for free essentially. This is a lint shaver from Knit Picks as well. And I have a few, um, like I think you just run this like over it and it takes off any pills, like any pillies. This one's fine because it's brand new. But my summer trellis one I made out of non-superwash wool and and also a single ply. I don't know if that like which of those combos is the part that's making it a little funny, but um, it's peeling a little bit. So I saw this and I was like, oh, that's perfect. I'll just pick up that and get my free shipping. <laughs> Okay, and then the last thing I purchased, um, this is for the shop. It's not, it's not for my personal use, I would say, but I got this game twister. I'm so excited. Um, so some people may not know, let me give you a backstory just to, smidge little history here. For those of you who don't know, um, I have not taken any money from Breaking Yarn to pay myself. In the entire time that I've been running Breaking Yarn, that might be shocking to people, um, but I started Breaking Yarn with a hundred dollars and it was a birthday check. So, um, everything that I've been able to build maybe has gone a little slower because I haven't put any, I haven't put any personal money into it. And then I also haven't taken any money out of Breaking Yarn to pay myself or do anything like that. But what I have been doing is slowly adding to my tools and my, um, just like things that I need for the business. Like I finally just got a spin dryer um, I finally got a drying rack. I know that sounds so crazy because like, what? Like how does, how does a yarn dyer not have those things? But it's expensive, you know? Like, um, when you're just starting out, you really don't have 
I mean, I'm just, I'm just trying to say that you don't need to have a ton of money to start a business if you don't want to. It may take a little bit longer. Um, you may have to like slowly upgrade things as you get there, but it's doable. And I just want that to be an encouragement to you in case you're thinking about starting something. I don't want you to feel like I have to have all this money. I need to have five grand to do all this. I mean, maybe if you just want to jump in and buy a bunch of stuff right away, um, buy a bunch of inventory to dye, buy a bunch of dye, buy a bunch of pans, like all that stuff. Um, or you can start small, right? Like my first yarns that I purchased, I purchased sample yarn from a yarn dyer, um, supplier. I'm trying to remember, I'm trying to remember the name, um, dyer supplier, I think is what they're called. Um, and they're run by Knit Crate. And they sell like sample skeins so you can buy like one <laughs> skein to like try it out and that's what i started with i bought sample skeins i dyed them i sold them and then i bought more from other other places i eventually switched where i was getting my yarn from but it but nah long story short follow your dreams do what it do whatever it takes to follow your dreams and see them come to fruition so all that to say I just bought myself the skein twister so that I can have pretty skeins because, and also save my shoulders and my arms and my wrists from doing this all the time um, and get pretty skeins of yarn. So I'm excited to get that set up. I haven't had a chance to like set it up. I need to clamp it to a table and like there's things I have to do, but I'm so excited to finally have one. I told my husband, like, that was kind of the last thing that I'm like, you know, if I'm gonna do this, like, full time someday, it would be great if I could get the skein twister. And he's like, why don't you just get it? Like, you have the money in your business account. Like, why don't you just get it? And I'm like, yeah, I guess I, I guess I should. Like, I guess I should have the tools I need to do a good job and to do an even better job and to kind of be up there on the level of other indie dyers who are literally doing this for a living. Um, since that's a goal of mine, um, I thought it would be good to do that. So anyways, all right, I digress. I have, um, I just released the Eye of the Partridge Heel Cowl pattern. It's a free cowl pattern on my website, breakingyarn.com and on Ravelry. And I had some of the most amazing testers test knit this for me. So I am just going to run through some of their photos here. Two of the um, knits were done in Breaking Violet, which turned out super cute. And the other one was done in Breaking Black which turned out super cute. And she also did the edging in gray matter. Um, but yes, I am so thankful to everyone who was able to test knit for me. Um, I put out a YouTube video that goes with that pattern. Um, I'll link it down below and also up in the cards in case you need to check that out for the pattern. It helps how to read your stitches and also how to tink back in case you make a mistake or you get off in the pattern at all. Um, so that's available as well. I think that's it for episode 31 of the Breaking Yarn podcast. Thank you so much for joining me today and I hope you have a wonderful and blessed day. We'll see you.